Welcome back with me tonight live from Minot via Skype, the owner of standingblog.com, Rob Port. Rob, I just opened up saying, hey, North Dakota legislatures, give me back my money. We keep hearing about property tax relief, but they couldn't even get the income taxes to become zero. And since it's tax day, I want to ask you, is there going to be any real tax relief coming out of this legislative session? Yeah, I think we're, we're definitely going to get some income tax relief. Uh, the House earlier in the session passed a, uh, a over $500 million uh, income tax relief plan. Uh, it was like $324 million for individuals, uh, a couple hundred million for, for corporations, and it was a good package. That's pretty substantial tax relief. Uh, the problem is, is the Senate is almost certainly going to water it down. Uh, the, all Governor Dalrymple recommended in his budget was $125 million, $100 million in, in individual, $25 million in corporate. Uh, so unfortunately, that's going to get watered down. As for the rest of it, you know, I, I look at this property tax plan, and really all I'm seeing is a shift in spending. Uh, we're sending a lot more money from the state down to the local level, and I understand that that's supposed to buy down local property taxes, but that spending not going away. That spending's being shifted from local, proper, local tax revenues to state tax revenues. I pay both taxes. Most North Dakotans pay taxes uh, uh, to the local government and to the state government. We're not, we're not really accomplishing anything in terms of actual tax relief there. What we're doing is hiding a whole bunch of sp uh, spending uh, in, in the state's uh, surplus. How did they not get the message after Measure 2? I mean, I just said in the first segment, I feel like North Bismarck at times just treats us, the people of North Dakota, like a bunch of rubes. Like, oh, yeah, we'll deal with you guys later. I mean... What's it going to take for them to finally get the message and create a program of real, true property tax relief? You know, I, I'm not real sure. I, I, I think the only way it's really going to come about, uh, because, listen, North Dakotans, when they voted on Measure 2, I was a Measure 2 supporter, but it went down in flames. And the argument that North Dakotans bought into was keep it local. Well, how are we keeping it local when the state is essentially taking over local school spending? We're not keeping it local <laughs> at all. And as for what it's going to take to get actual property tax relief, I think what it's going to take is, is citizens waking up to the fact that this is not probably a problem that the legislature is going to fix. As long as property tax relief is what we want, then what we need to realize is that local governments levy the property tax. And if you want a solution to the property tax, you need to go to your local governments and demand it. So you just mentioned keeping it local. Uh, Senator Cook stripped a bill that was going to give money back to the local governments out in Western North Dakota to help with some of the needs that they have. In one of your posts, you actually sort of agreed with what he was doing. And I say, wait a second, even if you're going to say, hey, Chris, I want more scrutiny on this money being spent, the whole point of a Republican conservative principle is to say, hey, keep it local. Let the local governments deal with it. Don't let these state legislators think they're omniscient deal with it, you say. Well, first of all, those are statewide tax dollars. Now, we can agree or disagree about whether or not those tax well, dollars... Rob, let me interrupt you. Sir, let me interrupt you, because here's the reason they're statewide tax dollars is because of the tax formula that's being used. The state government keeps going, give me more, give me more, give me more. I'm saying they need to change the formula so there's more money going to these local townships, the local county cities. That's going to make the difference. You're right. And actually, I don't disagree with you. We should change the formula so that more of that money stays local to begin with. So we don't have this this uh, this this uh, problem where we're shift, you know, we're, we're, we're paying the taxes into the state level and then turning around and having to filter them back to that. That's very inefficient. We don't want to be doing that. My problem, though, is that we have the tax structure that we have right now. And under the tax structure that we have right now, those are statewide tax dollars. And before we go throwing them out into the West and li listen, uh, I, I agree with local control, but elected local officials are politicians, too. They're not above exaggerating needs. They're not above uh, a, a some self-serving grandstanding. And, and honestly, I mean, I look at some of the things like in, in the city of Williston, for instance, uh, they can't keep up with infrastructure. They can't keep up with sewer. They can't keep up with, with the basic functions of government. Yet the citizens there passed a referendum to increase the sales tax. They committed it to the parks district and then built a gigantic rec center. And then the rest of us, the rest of the state, is expected to give Williston more money for infrastructure. That shows extremely poor priorities at the local level. And as long as those tax dollars are state tax dollars, the state should give them all the scrutiny they can. Lost, uh, Rob, last question for you. Here's the thing that I see, though, in this equation, is it gives the state legislators a chance to pound their chest and say, hey, look how great I'm doing. Look at all the state coffers that are getting all this money into them, rather than saying, you know what, let's give the money back to the local governments. My question for you is this, yes or no, is there a bill or something that's going to happen this session to change this equation so more money starts going back to the local governments? governments rather than allowing these state legislators to pound their chest. You know, I, at this point, I don't know what's going to come out as far as changing the formula. There were bills before it that's very much still in the works. It's still a very fluid situation. And that's something you're right. You and I agree on that, Chris, 
It should change it. We should be leaving more money at the local level for those oil impacted counties so that they have the money to address needs. Rob, always great to have you on. Really appreciate your time. Again, the owner of SayAnythingBlog.com, Rob Port, will have you back on again. Stay with us. We've talked about this a little bit before in the show, but what's it going to take to have North uh, Fargo, excuse me, to start to build up rather than build out? Let's save as much of this valuable farmland as we can. We've got an NDSU professor that's going to join us next to discuss that. And as always, please join our conversation. Go to our website, 630pov.com. You can email us there at 630pov at valuenewslive.com. You can also leave us a text message at the number below and a voicemail as well. We'll be right back.